We're bringing all the smoke. Today we're gonna to be talking about the infamous Chief Steamer. Everybody's been asking me about this. Ever since I started my channel, I've been getting questions here and there. Details, what kind of steamer are you using? Hey, details, how do you use the steamer? Hey, details, where'd you get your steamer? Well, we're gonna let you know today. First of all, let me tell you about my journey through the whole steaming process and finding the right steamer for me. There's kind of steps that you take fundamentally to learn not only the processes, but the techniques to get the best result. So firstly, you start with microfiber towels, then you start with brushes, then maybe compressed air. Eventually you start kind of seeing these detailers using steam. Steam is beneficial in multiple ways. It can be used in a few different applications. We use steam on pretty much almost every detail uh, with the exception of some vehicles, some uh, fabrics or materials, and some maintenance clients, we don't use steam. But for the most part, it's used almost on a daily basis. People always ask, what's better, a steamer or an extractor? In my opinion, this is just my opinion, the steamer is more versatile for every level of detailing. At a certain point, the extractor, you will outgrow an extractor if you have proper technique. And with the training and development of refining your technique, you will start to see that you really don't have a need for an extractor. Even if you don't have a steamer, at some point, the extractor, there's gonna be those extreme cases where you do need an extractor or a steamer, but most of the time, I would say a lot of the vehicles that I work on, I would say maybe one in the past year, I needed an extractor. But for the most part, the steamer can be used for, for engines, for interiors, for exteriors. You can use it for, for headliners, odor removal. Just think about what the steam is doing to upholstered areas. You have fibers and you have threads that are crossing, they're cross-linked with one another, super tight in seats, in seat belts, in headliners, being able to go into those tightly weaved, um, those tightly weaved threads and opening them up to allow them to breathe. You're removing odors, you're removing stains, you're removing, you're removing, um, you're removing all of this could be causing, could be, that could be the core issue of the odors or, or the stains themselves. In my opinion, steam is a superior way to clean. Also, you're gonna cut back on your chemical usage. You're not gonna, there's cars where we just go straight steam. I don't use any other chemicals, no interior cleaner, no carpet cleaner, nothing. As, as I started to progress with my technical abilities and my methods became a little bit more precise, a little bit more consistent and a little bit more developed on the cleaning and technical side, going into a steamer, the first one I had was this little guy from Harbor Freight, which did a great job for me at the time. It helped me, it helped me, get a good introduction to steam. This guy, the Harbor Freight steamer was good for a short period of time. The downside to the Harbor Freight one was that, the, well, let's go over the pros first. The pros were, it was inexpensive. I wanna say it was maybe, a, you know, it was under 150 bucks. Um, it was small, it was compact, it was lightweight. Um, the cons for that unit were, it was not a continuous fill, meaning that the, the boiling element and the, he the heating element and the water tank were in one. So you are unable to fill up the water tank unless you've let the unit cool down, you opened up the valves and released all the steam, let it cool down, and then you pour in the water, and then you have to wait for the unit to reheat itself. Those were some cons about it. Also, the life of the of the unit. This is not made for heavy duty industrial cleaning and it's not used for, it's not meant for everyday usage. So some of the plastic parts had gotten heated, heated up. The, uh, the actual hose itself at some point in one of the units, I had two of those units. At one point, one of the units, uh, one of the holes was punctured, so it was releasing steam and causing the actual handle that I was using to get extremely hot. The all plastic construction also tend to get pretty hot. So uh, there was really not a lot of safety features on the unit as well. So the Harbor Freight unit also, you would need distilled water and the PSI was probably about maybe about half, maybe a little bit more than half of what the unit I'm running with now has. There became a time where my skill set and technical ability actually outworked the tool itself, whether that be heating time, whether that be actually execution of the process or just getting a better clean by hand because my, my technical skills were getting that good. So the tool almost became obsolete for me. It wasn't really something that I could use. I kind of surpassed its capabilities of what it was able to do. So I was able to do things by hand that I no longer needed that steamer for. So obviously I wanted to step up, get a new steamer and really see what I'm capable of doing with my with my current skill set as well as a tool that can that can handle the man the demand of my needs now. After the Harbor Freight came the Vapor Clean. The Vapor Clean was a more industrial, more professional tool 
which I believe it was rated at about 90 PSI. So this had a lot more PSI, a lot more cleaning power. It worked very well, but at the same time, it was not a continuous fill tool. So I still had that downtime. And during that downtime, that was causing me a lot of issues. When you're working at a fast pace and it takes you 15 minutes for your steamer to heat up and say you have to do two rounds of steam, that's, you know, you're talking 30 minutes out of your time before you're able to use a steamer. So if you're not managing your time and your operations properly, you could be wasting, you know, possibly an hour just because the, the downtime of your steamer and you not being able to juggle and incorporate other things that you need to be doing during that downtime to consistently keep the flow of your business and operation moving. So I got to the point where, and that, that steamer was, I want to say it was in the $800 range, $800, $900 range. The chief steamer that I have now, I'm going to tell you the pros of it, why I love it, why I'm sticking to it, and why I believe this is the best steamer on the market. This steamer here is a continuous fill, which means if it runs out of water, once this heating element is, is hot, all I have to do is fill it up with water. It can still be on. I just fill it up with water, turn the switch on and off. That way it indicates and it reads that it's full again and immediately hot water and steam will start to, you know, start to come out. So I'm already producing steam in a short downtime, uh, actually zero downtime, just the fill time. And, uh, and we're ready to go. It comes with a ton of tools. It comes with a long wand um, and a carpet cleaning tool. It comes with the triangular upholstery tool. Um, I also purchased some bonnets that cover this tool. The bonnets are going to, uh, the bonnets cover it. It's a small triangle. These guys just slip on. They're made specifically for the tool. So I'm not using microfiber towels. I'm not needing to switch things out. I'm not ruining towels. As you guys know, heat destroys a microfiber towel. So I'm not having to worry about that. If needed, yes, we do run with some microfiber towels that are throwaway and I'll be able to do that. But these come with a microfiber uh, material as well. So these guys are ideal for detailers. Um, this tool also um, is great for covering larger surfaces. There's 10, 10, um, 10 heat escapes through here. So you have a total of 10, 10 little holes, openings, shooting out steam, producing lots of heat in one concentrated area. You have two tips. One tip is gonna have three holes on it. So you get more of a dispersed, more of a separation to get a wider area. If you're not looking to isolate one direct area, you will lose a little bit of the pressure since the steam is going three parts instead of one. And then you have the one that I primarily use the most, which is gonna be the single tip. This is gonna give good isolation to a certain area, depending on how close or far you are from your object that you're steaming. It comes with a couple metal brushes and it comes with a couple of forest hair brushes. So if you're steaming, possibly engines, areas that are real tough, you're able to kind of brush as you're steaming at the same time. This tool is a very simple tool. Basically you have an on and off switch. With those on and off switch, it just controls the power. Also, you have a gauge here for your steam. Small gauge releases less steam and less moisture. The higher is gonna let out a little bit more moisture, but a lot more steam. So it's gonna be very, very versatile as far as if you're working with extremely delicate fabrics, if you're working with a very valuable vehicle, if you're, you know, if you're working with something heavier grime, maybe a disaster detail, removing oils, gum, things like that, you're gonna wanna go high speed, or you're gonna wanna open this valve up and really get down in there. So I purchased this unit about three years ago. This thing is a tank. I had one issue with it. I sent it back within the first two years. I think there was a, war there was a warranty on it that was up for two years. It was right under two years. I sent it in. They sent it right back within about a week and a half. I had my steamer back operating soundly. Um, there was an electrical issue with it on the inside. It was because I wasn't wrapping the cord up properly. It's a great tool, very, very durable. It withstands the wear and tear of me using this. You know, when I first received it, I was using it pretty much on every detail just because I was so excited. It has changed the way that I detail and it has changed the way that I have set my standards for my business and my operation. It's very, very low maintenance. It's to be used with tap water only. This has a filtration system in it. it. It even has a little sign here. Do not use distilled or softened water, tap water only. So you use tap water in it. You do get some buildup and you need to drain out. I would say once I drain it out once a week and I also fill it up with water and vinegar and a little bit of vinegar. And I let, let that boil down and I run it through the system to clear out the hose, the filtration system, as well as the tips and that usually helps quite a bit because the calcium buildup does, it does occur. Removing odor is almost impossible without one of these guys or an ozone. Combined together, it's easy. We remove stains, we remove odors, we remove anything you can think of in a vehicle with this guy here in half the time it would take us without it. So 
Yes, it's an expensive unit. This unit here, you're probably looking at about $1,200, but think of the time that you will be saving and think of the services that you'll be able to offer and be able to do them in half the time. And uh, I would, I would, I think I made my money back with this guy within the first month that I purchased it because I was able to do a lot more interiors and take on a lot heavier jobs that before would have taken me hours or maybe even days to do. You know, you try doing a Dodge Caravan without one of these, it's pretty difficult. Even if you're using a professional grade steamer that's not quite at this level, it's gonna make a big difference. The last steamer I had was maybe, if I rated it from one to 10, 10 being the best, it was probably at about an eight. I would say this guy is a 10 and it makes a world of a difference. It's like using a Rupes polisher opposed to a Max Shine polisher. So at some point, the quality is going to take, is gonna be a, a large factor for you. If that means you're using it for a long time, if you're using a Max Shine polisher and you're using a Rupes polisher, I'm sure over the amount of the detail, the Rupes polisher is going to perform better. It's made and it's engineered a little bit differently it's top of the line. There's reasons things are top of the line because they're made with quality and they're meant to be used and punished and, and really and really being pushed to their maximum potential. So as soon as I purchased this unit, I saw an immediate difference. It was, at the time, it was the most expensive item that I had purchased, the biggest investment that I had made on my business, but it has also been the most impactful. So I don't regret it one bit. Yes, I kind of stalled on it for a long time. I thought about it for probably about six months before I did it. Once I did it, I told myself I should have did this six months ago when I first learned about this unit. I see a lot of people on their third, fourth, some people even on their fifth steamer. If you're buying a cheaper steamer, you could buy a quality unit, be getting a better outcome every time you work and not having to worry about the maintenance or having to replace or the warranty, having to go back and buy new ones. You know, even if it's only $300 still, you buy, two of those or three of those, you could essentially have had one of these. So buy the quality stuff when it comes to certain items. This is one of the ones that I believe is worth the money. Um, I don't know a single detailer that has purchased this after I've talked to them about it that has been disappointed. They've all said that it's changed their game and that they absolutely love it. And it's a great unit. In the long run, guys, if you're debating price-wise, yes, it is a big purchase, but what you're gonna be doing is, just think about this. When you purchase it, you're gonna be eliminating a lot of heavy scrubbing, a lot of extracting, a lot of chemical usage, which in return turns into time. You're gonna save a ton of time. And we all know if you're saving time, you're saving money. So thank you again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. We need to start sharing this information. We need to start sharing this channel. I want more and more detailers to see this. So go ahead, hit that like button, share this, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. And don't forget, Luke's training ends in four days. Sign up September 15th. I'll leave the description in that link as well. You'll also see areas where the steamer is utilized by him. So definitely check out the check out this chief steamer. Check out the training. I'll catch you guys on the next one.